Guba Diaspora Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Guba Diaspora Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 15% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Guba Diaspora Card can also be used as a prepaid Visa card with Access Bank R Partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Visit www.gubadiaspora.com. Guba Diaspora Card, the best travelling companion to Ghana. Thank you very much, viewers, for joining me on The Dentist Show. Like I said, I am with David Opoku Mensa, the founder and CEO of Ecote Collections. David, thank you very much for joining me on the show. Welcome. Again, thank you, Mensa. thank you, thank you. So we're in Achimota. Yes, New Achimota. New Achimota. Yeah. I want to know about more about you. So tell me about your educational background and why you actually decided to travel to the UK. Basic education from Alston Academy and St. John's. JSS mm -hmm. and I moved on to St. Augustine's College in Cape Coast okay. and then further on I went to the University of Ghana in Lagos. What did you study? What were you studying? I did psychology, information studies and music. Okay so nothing to do with tailoring nothing that you're doing? At all. Wow. What made you you know want to go to the UK? One I wanted to visit family okay. and I'd seen people as well travel come back with the Boga status looking all good so I thought you know what let me get that exposure as well. Okay do you believe that you know as Ghanaians we we are looking for greener pastures in the in the UK? Yeah I, I see a lot of people there who are still trying to get that greener pasture yeah. kind of thing and mm. then maybe they might want to move back but mm. I, I didn't see that at some point when I was doing the hustle jobs mm. Because uh, once I got in, I was introduced to a few jobs from construction, bus cleaning. Mm. I did a few kitchen jobs for KFC and then I moved on to doing security. But I still couldn't find that ultimate goal mm. to move me back home. Mm. So I just decided to, to just, just come back. You just decided to come back? Yeah. Okay. So when you came back, you've had that experience. Did you feel like you're the bogger? guy when you came back did you did people say hey there, there was David. a challenge there was a mm -hmm. challenge just before i was coming back home i did quite a few phone calls okay and then i was speaking to most of my mates some here some abroad in the us mm -hmm. in europe etc and this call i actually put out close because i wanted to know what the close friends were doing at the time uh -huh. and when you pull out that phone call you get someone saying oh coffee after uni now works for say echo bank mm. and he's doing well mm. A works for Ghana Commercial Bank, he's mm. even bought a car now. And I was thinking to myself, you know what, what, what job roles do they have? And mm. they say, oh, maybe because the bank just started, they've even made Kofi a uh, branch manager. Okay. And I'm sitting there out in the UK saying, you know what, I'm making some good money though, mm. but what is my role? What's mm. my job profession? Mm. I can't tell anyone on those three-way calls mm. that I'm actually a security guard. At some point, I just decided, you know what, let me take all the chances and come back home mm. and see what best I can do for myself. Did you actually bring a lot of money or were you, all your money spent on bills? To be honest, I made some good money, but okay. more than half of the money kept going into utility bills, mm. travel cards, etc. Mm. You couldn't save that much. Mm. But because I had a mindset at some point mm -hmm. in 2008 that I wanted to move to Ghana, mm. in January, a cousin of mine actually set up a Ghana account for me and said to me, you know what, once you get paid, mm -hmm. take out your utility bills yeah. and take out travel card, etc., and then send all the difference back home. Mm -hmm. But once I started with that agenda that my cousin gave to me, so I was able fun. to send good enough money back home before I decided to move back. So what happened next? First and foremost, I wanted to do my national service. Okay. So I, I got that signed up and I started. Mm -hmm. Along the way, I started brainstorming with family and friends what to do next. I spoke to a friend at the time who at some point became a partner because mm. he was pushing the business. Um, ben Adopoku, most known as uh, Shagari, he's moved back to the UK now. Okay. So I told him the agenda because just before I come back home, we're doing a lot of um, hype and promotions for a Nigerian couture, Mace couture, on mm. Facebook. Okay. And we're just doing that for free. We just liked every outfit he did mm -hmm. and posted on social media. Mm. So I told him, you know what, I've seen these clothes mm. and I have a lot of interest in there. I think I want to do the same, mm. but I don't know where to start. Mm. So telling him what idea I had, mm. I woke up the next morning. Mm -hmm. He had come up with um, the brand name, Ecote Collections. Mm -hmm. 
come up with a logo. Mm. What does it mean? It Echo. means uh, side collections, okay. the echo, okay. beside or side by side. Okay. But I actually picked that because at that time, mm -hmm. I was still looking for the white color jobs here in Ghana. Moving back and seeing my friends in the shirts and tie, mm. suit kind of thing. I also wanted to get into the mainstream. Mm. So after um, Ben Adopoku, or Obashi Gushagari, mm. we must call him, um, came up with the Ekote Collections logo and brand name, mm. I further went on to discuss with three friends from uni, mm. Kojo Silas, Kwe Amate, both of them into photography, mm. and then uh, Suro Gokel, who was at the time into media and advertising, okay. about the same idea that I had. Mm. Fortunately for me at the time, the, we're having an event, the, the Miss Malaika event, okay. and then Suro said to me, um, there's a lady looking for more hype and promotion. So um, what can you do mm. in, in a better form? So I said to him, I'll tell you what, I'll make her a few clothes mm -hmm. and then we can do a photo shoot of her, put on social media okay. and help her through her African category mm. section. Okay. And then we'll use those same photos as well to promote the brand name. Mm. They agreed and then we set it off. So we put these um, images on social media, mm -hmm. Facebook at the time. Mm -hmm. And then um, same page that Bernard had created, I woke up within a few days, I mean, it didn't take too long a time, about a week, mm -hmm. and I realized that I had loads of um, text messages coming through my mm. phone, emails, etc., and people start asking me questions about how much the outfits go for, where I'm, at, I'm located mm. in Ghana and all that. So I thought, you know what, then this is a business for me. Mm. So I went back to the initial tailor that I was using, and yeah. I said to her, for how much you're charging me for an outfit that, um, you're making for me mm. now. I want to rope in more business mm. to your table, mm. but I need a favor. Mm. You need to give me a knockoff price mm -hmm. so I can have that as a margin, as profit for of myself course, yeah. to run the business. business yeah. So she agreed and I said to her, okay, I'm going to start off with using my own peers mm -hmm. and then uh, family members yeah. to try and tell them the good stuff that we, we can make here yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. So I started making a few clothes mm -hmm. and I was paying her off. I was giving her half deposit mm. once it's done mm. and I pay her the other half. Okay. But then I was funding it all by myself because I thought I'd move back home with a little bit of cash on okay. my hands. So I take the order from the customer, fund it all the way through. Okay. On delivery, I take my cash. Okay. I take off my knockoff, which is my profit, yeah. and then I give back her cash there. Okay. So I started running that on rotation. Mm. But honest truth is, I didn't still think this was the job for me because mm. I was still looking for that white color job. Yeah. So I still went on speaking to friends. And how, for more how did your friends feel about you now a tailor? You're, you're a tailor. I mean, the friend that they knew that did psychology um, is now a tailor. And how did your dad perceive it? Very difficult at the time. It was a lot of challenge for me. Um, I wake up every morning leave the house after my house chores etc with a tape measure around my neck and mm. i just walk out of the house mm. he doesn't get to see me till about 6 7 pm mm. um it was through those challenges i i came to realize that i need to prove a point that mm. i don't only need to be in the white color job section i can do something you. on my own because i'd spoken to a few friends within the white color job areas to try and find me an opportunity. Fortunately for me, a friend of mine, Godfrey Buduata, introduced me to one J Champo, mm. who owned a group of companies okay. and said to him, I was looking for some work to do. Mm. He scheduled an appointment with me. I spoke to this man and uh, for a few minutes, he made me aware, I'm here for a reason, isn't it? And I yeah. said, yes, I want to work for you. Mm. He was like, okay, I have a group of companies, yes, but um, your friend also mentions that you have some something on your own you're doing. Mm. What is it? And I said to him, oh, I'm trying to build up something within the fashion industry. Mm. So he asked to see what I was doing. Fortunately for me at the time, I had an iPad. Okay. So I flipped a few pictures to show to him. To some of the Just after about four or five pictures, he asked that um, I give him a few minutes. He walked up to his car, came back, and all he said to me was, um, put to me a question first, that mm. with what I had started, was it registered? And I said, no. He said, do I have the passion for it? I said, yes, but that's not what I'm looking to do. Mm. He said, okay, you know what? I'm interested in the clothes you're making. Mm. I'm seeing beautiful pictures on your iPad, but I want to actually wear the outfit. So I want you to make me five outfits. How much is it gonna cost? I mentioned the price quote at the time. He signed me a check for all five, fully paid. Wow. I was in a state of shock because I just started it within about three weeks. And then he further on went to say to me- fate? Is that, what is that? This is what I say, to, 
to be honest, I think it's just a blessing me being in this industry. Because he wrote a check for five items. Mm -hmm. Featheron said to me that um, he was giving me directions to his house. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make two items for his wife. Mm -hmm. And then he had three kids at a time. He wants me to make two outfits for each and every one of them. And he wrote me a check for that as well. Wow. But then he put to me a challenge and said to me, I said to him at the time, my time limits were two weeks. Mm. But he wanted all the outfits made in a week. Wow. And then even before I deliver the out items, he wants to be sure I had registered a company. So Whoa. he gave me an ultimatum. One week, get the co company registered, show me the certificate. If not, I'm going to register it. I'm not going to change anything about the firm, mm -hmm. but you're going to be working for me. I came back home, thought through it. I had these checks at hand. And I thought, you know what? Let me go cash the check. Yeah. Get the company started and yeah. get the work rolling. Yeah. I got these outfits done. Fast forward, he came back a week. He, yeah. he said he was traveling. He mm -hmm. came back to Ghana. First thing he asked was, is the company registered? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. He said, have you any machinery? Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm outsourcing tailors to do it now. He put another challenge to me and said, you know, you met me and I bought like 13 items mm -hmm. on the go from mm -hmm. you. So um, I'm throwing you another challenge. When you meet any customer like me, especially because my focus was to do caftans for grooms, yes, getting engaged. Yes. He said, throw a challenge to the groom. Say to him, you want to make him his outfit for the engagement. Mm -hmm. You also want to make him his outfit for his Sunday Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then further even go on telling him that you want to make him outfits for all his groomsmen, but then let him appreciate the business you're doing. So give him a knockoff or say to him, if you give me say 10, groomsmen i'm gonna make your outfit for you for free wow so he started putting ideas in my head he became like a mentor a mentor to me so i got the outfits done he asked me to actually deliver all the outfits not to his address when i got them done mm -hmm. but he scheduled an appointment that i meet him at golden tulip i got there and he had most of his friends and they're in that cloud of the top crew men mm. they were all there i put the outfits out from the bags and it each and every one of them started picking out the outfit and saying, you know what, Jay, this is mine. Wow. And he started saying, you know what, if they are taking my clothes off me now, it means you have to do me a replacement five, <laughs> or you have to take your measurements now and then take their orders. What? So there, I just decided, you know what, this is it for me. Let me just put all the energy I've got in there. Oh, wow. So what happened next? So after that, you did the World Cup, you did the Black Stars. Yes. So what happened with that? That's another, that's another story to tell. <laughs> along the line, yeah. after JA Champon and meeting mm -hmm. loads of clients, yeah. I had a phone call from the UK. And it came to me saying, um, do I want to further push the business? From who? From a random number. Okay. And then okay. they just said to me, um, they want to give me an opportunity okay. to um, do something for Ghana. Okay. I was thinking out loud, Ghana, for who? Mm. And they said to me um, to, schedule an appointment with a gentleman at the sports ministry okay. and go take a few measurements. So okay. I went through, his name I think uh, was Jude. Okay. I met him, did a few um, measurements mm -hmm. and then he asked that I make an outfit for the minister at the time. Okay. And they gave me a time frame of 48 hours to mm -hmm. get it done. Wow. So um, I decided to push it. I took, I took the order under pressure, mm -hmm. but I did. Mm -hmm. And then the minister was happy at the time. Yeah. So I just kept on with my daily activities mm -hmm. and then Another phone call came from the UK and they came from Dental Martin, which is Dental Martin MD, interviewing me. And then she said, you know what, I want to further give you another connect. We've seen the good stuff you're doing since you moved back home to mm. Ghana. And um, would you want to um, further your activities in Ghana yeah. in a bigger role? Mm. I said, I I'm ready for any challenge. Mm. And she said, you know what, I'm going to have you do something for the ministry again. Mm. And then they're going to way options if you're fortunate you might be given a chance to close the black stars mm. i said I'll, I'll take the offer mm. so it came through i was scheduled for another appointment at the ministry i went through all the procedures and yeah. then fortunately it was confirmed that i could close the guard of black stars before yeah. the 2014 world cup excellent i appreciate definitely. your support you're yeah. very welcome we think you're very welcome i'm gonna go for a short commercial break we'll be right back Guba Diaspora Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts across Ghana. Subscribe today and get 15% off food and drink at Kempensky Hotel. Guba Diaspora Card, the best travelling companion to Ghana.
Welcome back from the commercial break. I'm still joined by David Opoku Mensa, founder and CEO of Encot Collections. Some Ghanaians feel as if Ghanaians who are based here are quite laid back and don't take work seriously. Did you find that? Yeah, from the onset I did. But I also, well, maybe from the experience I had with the UK, with mm. working with time especially mm. and all mm. that. So I thought, you know, I could pass on some knowledge to them. Mm. One, teach them timelines. That we can't play with, with our timelines. Yeah. We need to get the work done. Yeah. And then also, I observed there was an attitude. Mm. Even from facial expressions, mm. like say a customer comes and they're okay with their outfit, but today's men would want their trousers more fitted. Yeah. So you walk back to the shop floor and say, oh, Kwame, yeah, once their outfit more fitted, just do the necessary mm. alterations. Mm. You know, that facial look mm. seems like you're bothering them. Yes. But I try and pull them away and say, you know what? You need to have like a good look on your face. Mm. That's the customer. Because without them, we don't have the job. Yes. So you need to treat your customers right. Mm. Because it's based on referral. It's based on how we treat them that they will come back. If, if they are happy with what we're doing, once they go out there wearing the outfit and anyone compliments them, straight away they're going to mention where they got the outfit from. But if we don't treat them right, whatever compliments they get, they're just going to say thank you. Mm, and it stops there. Yeah. But if they're able to mention our name, then it means they're happy with what we're doing for them. Mm. So attitude, timelines, mm. I started talking through them and they've come to understand that we have to be within that time frame to keep the business running. Mm. Well done, and, and uh, I mean, we're, we're extremely proud of what you've been able to achieve. I'm sure that your story is inspiring a lot of people. Um, how have you been able to grow? And also looking at the fact that you started in your room and now you have grown and you're working from your garage. You know, you've been able to build on this. You know, I remember when you used to just ride on your motor to do your deliveries. How, how's it been? It's been, it's, been a, it's been a long hustle, but it's been worthwhile. Mm. I, I started off sourcing tailors yeah. and started to build a team. Yeah. But once I had a full passion to go 100% mm. for this, I had a big picture in mind. Mm. But obviously I thought, you know, for, for me to paint the big picture, mm. I had to start small. Mm. So I had to make certain sacrifices. Mm. Still, David of Pokemon has come back to Ghana from the UK, mm. doesn't own a car, mm. and all of a sudden he dresses with just a tape measure around his neck, mm -hmm. walking about town. <laughs> and uh, I started doing the motorbike, which is now the Okada mm -hmm. bit, you know. So I was moving around, hustling on the motorbike, trying to take orders, mm. get them done, mm. and delivered. The business started growing, then I started buying machines, but I bought them one at a time. Is this job capital intensive? Not capital intensive because um, I always have the thought of starting small. Okay. Obviously, I couldn't have owned all the 13 machines at the goal, then yes. it would be capital intensive. Yeah. But I just decided to take it one at a time. Mm. So I bought one machine at a time. And then after raising some funds, I decided to rent a space. Okay. And uh, through that, it became capital intensive because mm. I need to be pay bills, mm -hmm. utility bills, mm -hmm. pay for the space, etc. Yeah. I came back home one evening and spoke to my dad mm. and I said to him, I want to move the business home. Mm. He's old now and I take care of him. Mm. So I was like, I need to get closer to you. I can't be out there and then thinking I need to be back home every hour to check yeah. up on you. So yeah. give me a chance to move the business back home. Oh, yeah. So I moved back on the lower key, okay. sacrificed my room to become the office that you wow. see now. And then I asked them to use the garage mm -hmm. for the workspace. Yeah. The business kept on growing and then I did some extension of the garage so I have more room for the tailors and wow. then the designers. Wow. And through that, sacrificing this very sofa that we're sitting in mm. here now, I actually had to sleep on this for two years. Wow. Once customers are done with me for mm. the day, workers are gone, I shut the door because it was my room anyways. Yeah, yeah. Then I have to pull it and it becomes a sofa bed yeah. and I sleep in it. Through on, the business kept growing, I raised some money, and then I went back to the old man again and said, you know what, we've got a bit of space on the compound. Can you give me a chance to build a studio apartment? So at least I have it next to the main house yeah. and then to my job. Wow. And there I have my studio apartment wow. today. Wow, wow. So what is your dad saying now to you? Today, 
anywhere I go with him around town or even still me hearing him over the phone. Mm. He says, he's the one taking care of me and I've been doing this for seven years. Wow. And every day I wake up, I just look at just, I look at just him mm. and I see the blessing coming mm. my way. And then I look beyond that and I see I've got great clientele, loads wow. of customers out there every day appreciating the way we're doing. doing. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been really good. Do you know how many clients you've been able to satisfy? To be honest, I can't count. <laughs> I tried to do that two, three years ago. Really? I was happy with myself, mm -hmm. actually, because I, I keep books okay. on outfits we do every week. Okay. And uh, in 2015, mm -hmm. I actually picked one book and mm -hmm. I realized we had done over 1,200 in that year. Wow. So I started doing some analysis and I realized that we were able to do a minimum of 25 cup times every week, mm. which means in every month we're able to do about a hundred mm. plus mm. so in a year now i'm thinking we've gone past thousand two hundred oh, a year yeah. there's a boom in african fashion at the moment where do you think we're going do you, th do you can you feel it there's, there's a lot going on and i'm, I'm happy about it and, and i appreciate the business that we're doing for myself and a few other fashion mm. listeners I mean, a few years ago um someone is going to get married from here africa and then they're thinking of outsourcing their suits or wedding gowns from the western markets mm, but mm. today you have people actually in the western market give designers in mm. africa calls and say you know what i'm getting married i need you to do my suit for me my jacket get my gown made for the bride mm. do kaftans mm. for us so I, I, i'm thinking that we're doing very well mm. you even have um most of these um european artists mm. wearing the mm. kaftans about town and all that so i think i think we're, we're doing quite a good job Ghanaian fashionistas as well are doing very well mm. trying to put Ghana on the map and mm. then going out, out there and doing more. So in all this, do you think it's been worthwhile moving back? If you were given a job opportunity back in the UK now to come and work for a company that's going to pay you a huge salary, would you go back? I've been thinking through it and to be honest, I wouldn't take the offer. The only reason why I'll take an offer back in the UK is if it's in regard to what I'm doing, okay. fashion. Okay. But I still say to most friends that I've left behind that even if I have such an opportunity, I wouldn't live in the UK. Okay. The best I can do is 10 working days and I need to be back on this job because mm. I'm doing so well here. Mm. It's been really good. And it didn't even have to come from me. Most family and friends I left behind in the UK actually call me and say, not on my back, on my straight. Mm. I'm mm. like, no, if I will, it will be just for a few days. Mm. I can't come and live there. Yeah. And most friends now are saying they're very happy with me because I have two or three friends I used to play around with mm -hmm. a lot. And now they call me. One actually came back home. He hadn't been to Ghana in 12 years. Mm. And then he, come, he came back to Ghana, stopped by the office mm. with their mum. Mm. Once they, he walked through the shop with a mum, he called every worker on the shop floor to the office. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. He was like, Mumbra, 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 Mumbra. My God, what's this, what's this yeah. guy on about? And then he said to his mom, Ma, Madame Fouwe, I'll call back to Ghana. No? Not a far phone, not a friend here. I'm going to talk about Bissam Sikau and I'm going to train So I don't pick up his calls. Wow. You know, and then he started seeing images on Facebook, mm. Instagram, etc. And he said all that time he thought I was doing promotions still for the Nigerian guy. Mm. So he never thought the brand was mine. He just thought I was bored in Ghana and didn't have anything to do. So I'm just doing random posts on my social media. Yeah. So he just said to all the staff on the shop floor, me and I'm boss. I am his boss. Mm. Now, if there's anything, they should talk to him. He took money out of his pocket and just gave everyone money on the shop floor oh and said to me to come off my seat. And that, that's actually his desk. <laughs> Because if he had picked up any of the phone calls, maybe I might have shared the vision I had with him mm. and he would have been a partner to the firm now. Yeah, and I've, I've motivated him. He's mm. been back to Ghana three times mm. since, since he left. And do you think that's, a, that's one of the issues as well? Sometimes, you know, people call you from Ghana and you won't actually pick up the phone because you think that they're actually going to be asking you for money. Yeah. You know? That's the case. I experienced it. A few times when I was there, mm. I have family and friends call me and I actually would look up on the screen on my phone until mm. it goes to the voice message. Yeah. I want yeah. to hear the voice message and yeah. know why they're calling me before yeah. I call back. It, it's like, I think there's a lot of pressure. Once you've moved out there, yeah. people expect a lot from you. Exactly. But once you get stuck up with the system, 
it's, it's difficult to do even stuff for your own self, let alone do stuff for, for family back at home. And, and, and then you just decide to just yeah. forget everything and then, and then live there. So what would be your advice to somebody that's sitting there in West Green Road or Battersea who's watching this and um, wants to move back home to Ghana? You know, would you advise him? Would you encourage him? Would you tell him, yes, come back? Or would you say, you know what, if you've got something good, you can stay there? Honestly, I'll say to most people who are out there now that there's a lot of opportunities here. And I see a lot of potential in loads of people out there in the UK. And I think they can come back home and impact it. Fortunately for me, I think you're a blessing as well because you put me on a lot of platforms doing the Black Stars, I've clothed the Google Awards yeah, team. Yeah. I've met loads of top clients and all that. Mm. And further on, your husband has also been a blessing. Because mm. before I moved back to Ghana, I wanted to come back to Ghana, not just David Okumensa, mm. the bogger with a bit of muscles. <laughs> so at the time, I spoke to him yeah. about wanting to go to the gym. Yeah. And he said he had a gym at home. Mm. The first day I got in there, he put me through a lot of exercise, mm. which I had never done in mm. any gym before. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing I still remember, your husband mentioned, he said, it's been done before so you can do it and even if it hasn't been done before put in your head that you're going to be the first person to do it so anytime i picked up any weight the first thing he said to me was tell yourself it's been done before and you can push the weight and i've just kept on doing it. so i tell most people out there that i speak to and i contact that listen if it hasn't been done before be the first i mean you're in an environment where there are lots of opportunities this around you pick up something come back home and do it if there's something here as well already that you have an interest in, come back home and push it. Such an inspiration. I've really enjoyed the show today and I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you'll join us next week for more Dental Show. Guba Diaspora Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Guba Diaspora Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 15% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Guba Diaspora card can also be used as a prepaid visa card with Access Bank R partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Visit www.gubadiaspora.com. Guba Diaspora Card, the best traveling companion to Ghana.